everybody. Welcome to today's session through Legal Futures. My name is Safta Mahmood and today I'm going to be speaking to you about conducting advocacy uh, principally in children and personal protection family cases and as we've put in the title some of the trips and traits so to speak. This is one of those uh, training sessions where it's going to be more looking at uh, so-called soft skills so less reliance on law uh, and case law but more so on some of the essential skills that we all need to know about when we're conducting advocacy. Now what we've done with this session is uh, there's three parts to it and uh, the three parts the first is where I'm going to be going through with you some of the key uh, essentials of family law advocacy. So I'll be taking you through some of the key principles. I'm then going to be going through uh, some of the types of hearings we have, like I say, principally in children and uh, personal protection cases. And uh, the third part of the session today is uh, we're going to be doing some live evidence. And this is where I'm delighted to say that we've got a, a guest speaker who's going to be with us, uh, who's uh, going to be playing the, uh, the part of the witness as well. I find with these uh, courses it works better if you can see people doing it in action and as I've gone through some of the material with you I'm hoping that uh, that third part of the session you'll find helpful going forward. Okay so the first part then is really looking at uh, key principles so I'm going to be taking you through a number of these aspects such as addressing partisan advocacy, immediate analysis of the case, preparation of notes and so forth and also using law when you are of course dealing with family law advocacy. So let me work through these slides uh, in turn with you. Now one of the things is this, we need to be familiar about what does the code of conduct say about you doing litigation and many of you will know that uh, as of 25th of November 2019 uh, we did have some changes to the Code of Conduct for Solicitors. As you know, we had, we've had we effectively got two codes now. We've got the Code of Conduct for Solicitors and the Code of Conduct for Firms. And uh, this, as you know, is applicable as from 25th of November 2019. Now, when it comes to litigation advocacy, there's a sp specific branch within that. Many of you will be familiar. And it's not too dissimilar from what we had from the previous uh, Code of Practice. Principle 1 in particular, uh, if you look at paragraphs 2.1, 2.7, as a lawyer conducting advocacy, you'll be aware that first and foremost, we have to be clear about the rights of audience. And you'll be aware we've got the Legal Services Act, for example, 2007, which specifically goes through some of the aspects of rights of audience, the right to carry out litigation. You'll be familiar with that. and. Uh, that's significant when you're then deciding as to who conducts the hearing, whether it's uh, a qualified member of staff, whether it's a trainee solicitor or otherwise. Of course, look at the 